in Taunton has issued a severe thunderstorm warning effective until 3 p.m. for people in the following location in north central Connecticut, Hartford County. At 1.45 p.m., weather radar detected a severe thunderstorm moving across Litchfield County. This thunderstorm is moving east at 50 miles per hour and has a history of producing wind gusts to 80 miles per hour. Wind damage was reported in Cornwall with trees and power lines down within the past 15 minutes. This storm will be moving into Hartford County between 2 and 2.15. Severe thunderstorms produce damaging winds in excess of 55 miles per hour, destructive hail, deadly lightning, and very heavy rain. For your protection, move to an interior room on the lowest floor of your home or business. Heavy rains flood roads quickly, so don't drive into areas where water covers the road. This concludes the important EBS message. WTIC Hartford. The rich Republicans and right-minded conservatives and those who want to be either or both Liberals listen at their own risk, because as is being demonstrated by the rants of Al Gore lately and a number of other members of the Clinton administration, they cannot compete with the truth, ladies and gentlemen. They just can't compete with it. Got them on the run. Now, <clears throat> a couple things. Um, as you know, the, uh, the, the protesters of America, the rent-a-mob crowd, is out and about and has been for the past two to three weeks. They were really boisterous when I was on vacation. When I leave, they get courage. They show up and try to stop virtually everything from happening. And one of the things that occurred while I was on vacation a couple weeks ago was that students here in New York went absolutely batty protesting some budget cuts at the City University of New York. I have two separate stories about CUNY, the City University of New York, that you may find interesting, particularly those of you here in New York. Uh, they say that they can't cut any more at CUNY, that they're running into bare bones now. The New York Post has discovered two scholarship funds or programs one is, believe it or not, called the Ho Chi Minh Scholarship Fund. Did you know this? The Ho Chi Minh Scholarship Fund honors and promotes the, this is what it says, the legacy of the late Vietnamese freedom fighter. Well, the, it's a, this is a public supported university. The public is paying for this. This is the whole point. The public's paying for CUNY. They got the Ho Chi Minh Scholarship, which is to promote and honor the legacy of the late Vietnamese freedom fighter. There is a second scholarship called the Asata Shakur Scholarship. Do you know who Asata Shakur is? No, 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 not Tupac's father. Asata Shakur, celeb it, it, well, the, the scholarship, the Asata Shakur no relation to Tupac, scholarship celebrates the life of the renowned cop killer who, using what she calls her slave name of Joanne Chesimard, murdered cops. You? No, you know who I'm talking about now? Yeah, she, oh, she's, no, she's got a scholarship fund under the name of Asata Shakur, her slave name, that's what she calls it, was Joanne Chesimard. She now lives in Habana, Habana Kua. These scholarship funds both offer stipends worth $500 each to 25 students per year. They require the students to maintain a 2.0 grade point average as a minimum. And as the Post editorial says, who says CUNY has no standards? <laughs> so Manhattan Community College honors a Bolshevik despot and a political cop killer with two scholarship funds, while claiming they don't have any money to cut from their budget. CUNY story number two. The City University of New York has decided to spend $200,000 to study potty parity. 
for male and female students, despite the budget cuts that could force increases in tuition. They say that the research is needed. <clears throat> now get this. Research is needed because even though 61% of CUNY students are women, there are twice as many toilets for men as for women. So you've got those numbers. You've got 61% of the enrollment is women, yet twice as many toilets for men. You're going to spend 200 grand to have people study this. This is not fixing them. This is not building more. This is not changing. This is just to conduct the study. The Department of Design at CUNY is asking architects to submit documents by April 19th stating their qualifications to do the study of the 170 buildings in the senior college system. Nobody is happy about this. Elected officials are not happy, not even the students. Here's some, well, Jenny Mercado, 19, sophomore nursing student at Lehman College, which is part of the CUNY system, quote, I think it's ridiculous. We want to get an education, not worry about how long we're going to have to stand on line for the bathroom. Felicia Cox, 32, I've never had any problems with the number of bathrooms. What they should be doing instead is to stop the tuition increase. Arian Johnson, 21-year-old senior speech pathology major, quote, I don't care if there's one bathroom on the campus as long as there a teacher is a teacher in the section that I... 200, 200,000 dollars to uh, study potty parity. I have a suggestion for you CUNY students. Just use the street like the rest of New Yorkers use the street. Uh, <clears throat> who, we don't need porta potties in this town or any other kind of potties. I, I am not kidding you. I, I have, <laughs> I have seen the strangest things in this Madison Avenue. You know, you have Madison and Fifth Avenue, two of the attractions of New York City of, of Manhattan, and you can see people in three-piece suits, bang oh, right there on the corner. And people just uh, walk by. So, um, anyway, it's ridiculous, ladies and gentlemen. I <clears throat> wanted to pass this on to you. Also, for the longest time, ladies and gentlemen, I have been using innate intelligence, guided by experience, and my finely honed instincts to rebut and refute the silly notion that we are the victims of global warming, and that the global warming has been occurring precisely because of the high standard of living in the United States of America. We have had scientist after scientist get uh, just countless hours of television time to again incite fear in the hearts and minds of the American people. The American people have been told that their air conditioners, their automobiles, uh, use of fossil fuels, and uh, who knows what else, but certainly all of the ingredients of an advanced civilization and lifestyle have been blamed for global warming. We have been told a polar ice caps will melt, and that when this happens, sea levels will rise, and rich beachfront property will be submerged that the average temperature in New York City will be 85 degrees. It'll be uninhabitable in Texas. This is all the fault of the United States of America, and it's going to happen. They were asking you to prove it. No, we need 20 more years' data. But can we afford to wait for the data, they said. What if we're right? We've got to start making plans now. What are those plans? Everybody gets rid of their cars shuts off their air conditioners and washing machines and removes themselves from this advanced lifestyle and return to a more primitive lifestyle. And this has been picked up by a bunch of students and a bunch of left-wingers who every Earth Day... Oh, and we're coming... You know, we're coming up on Earth Day. What is it, April 22nd? We're coming up... There are huge Earth Day plans. This is going to be a fun Earth Day. I have it on good authority that some of the most ridiculous things that have yet happened in the environmental movement are going to take place on Earth Day this year. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, we told you not long ago of a couple of scientists who've been studying temperature data that's been provided by a polar orbiting satellite. The polar or orbiting satellite has found it's every, been taken to temperature of the Earth every day since 1979. And you know what they found? That the temperature of the Earth has gone up one one-hundredth of a degree. And they think this has happened primarily on the days where there are full moons. Do you know why that would be? Because when there is a full moon, more sunlight is reflected back to Earth, which provides the one-hundredth of a degree warming. Since 1979, no evidence. Now there's a second body of research. Comes to us from Sally Bolinas. She says that her study indicates, this is Harvard, her study indicates that global warming concerns are greatly exaggerated. The growing body of evidence shows that global warming is not a serious threat. Now had the world listened to me, had the world read my books, had the world listened to me explain how we don't have that kind of power. It's the same thing as ozone destruction. They claim we're destroying the ozone. How and where we're doing it simply with an advanced civilization. We, my friends, are putting that hole up there and people are going to die. They're going to get skin cancer and it's all because of the United States. These people in the third world, they can't be held accountable for it. They're not doing anything to destroy the ozone. I simply ask this question. If we wanted to destroy all the ozone in the stratosphere, could we do it? We could not. Do you know why? <clears throat> the reason why is that ozone is made by the sun. We would have to build the largest space fire truck in the history of the world, find a way to get it to the sun without melting, have enough water in it to put the sun out, and only then could we destroy the ozone layer? And if we did that, we'd destroy everything else at the same time, including our good friends, the dolphins. They too. The only people who would survive in that case would be the cockroaches. The cockroaches would survive even without a sun. And you find cockroaches everywhere. We couldn't do it. If we tried, we couldn't do it. And yet, they say it's happening even though we're not trying to. There are so many of these environmental myths, and the reason they exist is because the environmental movement is the new home of the socialist communist movement of the world since the fall of the Soviet Union. And it's made up of a bunch of people who every year gather together at some stupid UN conference, either in Rio de Janeiro or in Denmark or wherever, and basically say about the United States, you have too much, you are too rich, give it back, give us some. And the way we're going to get it to, uh, back from you is to accuse you of destroying the world for everybody else with your advanced civilization. We're too stupid and idiotic to figure out how to advance the civilizations in which we live. It's unfair that you've figured it out. And just like the liberals of America in the United States Congress, the rest of the world wants to take away from us what we have earned, what we have created, under the guise that we are destroying the planet. And the only way to save the planet is to stop the United States from this destruction. When in fact it's the United States that feeds the world. It's the United States that provides the economic impetus for the world. It's the United States that is the world. Oh, I love saying that too, because I'll tell you what, the liberals and the socialists in this country to hear that there goes that guy bragging again. There he goes, thinking that he's the center of the universe and that everything is revolving around him. Well, it's true. When it comes to these matters, ladies and gentlemen, the United States is the lone outpost in the world where the oppressed of the world desire to be. And this notion that we're destroying everything is something that uh, a bunch of learned people who know exactly what they're doing have been saying by virtue of willing accomplices in the media for decades and a bunch of skulls full of mush 
in universities around the world who only want love and togetherness and happiness and gee, every can't we just get along, buy into all this stuff because for the life of me, I can't understand it, but people want to live surrounded by panic every day. They want to live surrounded by hysteria. And they want to be able to say that they care about things and they feel bad about things and that makes them feel better about themselves because they supposedly are more conscious than everybody else when in fact they're all living lies. So there. We'll take a break and be back. Uh, get back to your phone calls right after this. You're listening to the EIB Network. Listen to Rushmore on WTIC AM 1080. Look, folks, I know you work hard. But what are you doing to relax, to recharge the batteries? Well, try this. The hot, swirling, tension-releasing experience you'll get from your own hot spring portable spa. It's America's number one selling portable spa, probably because they advertise it on this show. Go visit your hot spring spa dealer now or call them. They got a number, 1-800-299-RUSH. And find out about this spa's customized jet system, including the Moto Massage Jet that moves up and down your back. I'm telling you, folks, you'll feel great all over and you'll sleep like a baby. And who couldn't use that? Hot spring spas are the best built spas in America, easy to install, energy efficient, and made to be enjoyed all year round in any weather. I've been in a hot spring spa. Believe me, it's fun, and it is a perfect way to unwind. You need this. You really do. So call 1-800-299-RUSH or check the yellow pages for the dealer nearest you. Hot spring portable spas where America and my listeners go to relax. Family values. These days, everyone's talking about them. Well, at Hampton Inn, we've been offering family values for years. And business person and vacationer values, too. You see, at all of our over 450 locations, we offer you great value. You'll always get a fresh, clean, comfortable room, friendly, attentive service, complimentary continental breakfast, and free local calls, all at a competitive price. At Hampton Inn, where you'll be satisfied or your night's stay is free. Call 1-800-HAMPTON now for reservations. Most important things in our country have something in common. Tradition. We're very comfortable with things that are as they've always been. Each and every day at Nobody Beats the Whiz, thousands of customers are made happy and treated specially, just like they have always been. This is important to the men who run this family business as a father's relationship with his sons. Because it was their father who instilled in them all the values that have made Nobody Beats the Whiz what it is today, the number one place to buy home entertainment in the tri-state area. As founder of the company, he told them that people always try to get the lowest price they can. They're entitled to that. If you want to be successful in business, make a friend of everyone who wants the best deal. He also said that if you want to show your customers that you appreciate their business, offer them prices that are better than fair and honest, prices you'd give to a friend. Founders Day at Nobody Beats the Wiz is all about sons honoring their father and everything he believed in. Nobody Beats the Wiz. The brunette who walked into my office was a knockout, but the only thing on her mind was pasta. Find it, Sam. She said. The great pasta mom always served. On a hunch, I headed for my favorite supermarket. I stormed through the glass and chrome facade. The kid in a bow tie and apron blurted. Uh, uh, aisle five, San Giorgio, the pasta with the metal on every box. Later, the brunette dished out San Giorgio and murmured. You found it, Sam. San Giorgio, the great pasta mom always served. It was getting late, but the only thing on her mind was... Still San Giorgio. Get San Giorgio spaghetti, thin spaghetti, cut ziti, and vermicelli at the low price of buy one, get one free with your Express Savings Club card for the one pound package all this week at Big Y. While you save on hundreds of other items throughout the store. Big Y is the home of the Express Savings Club where you can save on up to five of each item. There's no minimum purchase and membership is free. So come to Big Y for great savings on San Giorgio and all your shopping needs. The all-new Bruce Stevens Show, this afternoon, 4 to 6, on WTIC, AM 1080. Another riot out in Los Angeles, this time when something went right. You have to wonder about the future. Yeah, they protest. I mean, protest. They rioted because UCLA won the NCAA Basketball Championship. 
The only good thing they did was turn over a media van. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, lady. But they did. They went nuts out there. Um, <laughs> it was... Uh, you used to only do those kinds of things in uh, Chicago. I, I'll tell you, you people in Los Angeles, at UCLA, this is all your fault. The basketball team is to be held directly accountable for the riots in Los Angeles last night, or the whatever you want to call them. <clears throat> they should have known this would happen. It was their duty to lose, uh, to keep the peace. That's the America some people know. Al Gonquin, Illinois. Margaret, hi, welcome to the program. Mega, mega dittos, Mr. Limbaugh. Thank you. The CEO of Radio Free America. Thank you very much. Um, I had a comment about Al Gore using Robin Hood as an analogy. That is such a lie. Robin Hood was absolutely a Republican. Yeah, you know what? Robin Hood stole from the government. Yes. Robin Hood took from an abusive government and gave back to the people. Robin Hood didn't steal from the rich. That's right. That's exactly right. And doesn't that king and his cronies remind you of how Arkansas used to be run? <laughs> yeah, probably still is. Yes. That's a good point. You know, I've made that point about Robin Hood before, but I had forgotten. I mean, I can't remember every good point I've made. And I thank Margaret for reminding me. That is true. Robin Hood did not steal from the rich. He stole from the government to give back to the poor in the forest. In the middle. Lake Arrowhead, California. Jim, hi. Welcome to the program. Hi, Rush. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. Boy, are we thankful for you. Oh, <laughs> you're too kind. Uh, I've been a conservative, uh, well, my whole adult life, and I'm an old man now, <laughs> and uh, operated a, a two successful medium-sized businesses in my life, and I'm semi-retired now. But if, if we can get rid of the graduated income tax anyway, the dynamics that are going to take place in our country are, is going to be unbelievable. And your fellow that called uh, a little while ago, he said, we tried free market economy, and what did we end up with was U.S. steel. Mm -hmm. It shows his woeful ignorance of the history of our nation. And we're not getting really good education now. But, you know, Andrew Carnegie established U.S. steel. Andrew Carnegie did, one, Carnegie did wonderful things for this nation. He established libraries all over the country. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he uh, established libraries in, well, all the English-speaking countries. Carnegie Hall, where liberal artists perform with federal tax dollars every day. Right. It's just, it's just amazing. You know, he even, established a, he even established a retirement fund for U.S. college professors. That's the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, he did all these marvelous things, and, and he created hundreds, uh, really thousands of jobs. That's how you create jobs. He created a lot of wealth for a lot of people. It's like Bill you Gates. You can't create wealth for yourself without creating wealth for others. That's right. It's like Bill Gates. How many millionaires exactly. has he made? Exactly. And what we've got to do is turn loose this, this creativity. Uh, and, and, of course, that's the exciting thing, because I never thought it would ever happen. Two years ago, I thought we were dead. You know, I was just waiting for the... I know what you mean. I never thought any of this stuff would happen in my lifetime. I'm amazed. It huh? is. That's why it's, it's, it's important to stay optimistic and patient at the same time. The illustration that I mentioned to, uh, to Bo was that was, uh, I, had an excellent, I have a good friend who started a company to manufacture a specialty product for the space agency. He, 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 developed a, he worked for, uh, for Caltech, and while working there, he said, hey, I can make a better rocket valve than that. And he made one in his garage, and he started selling them. And that became a, a company. Right. Uh, hang on just a second. We've got to take a break here because you reminded me of another point I made once, and, and I want to uh, revive that. We'll get back to you right after the break. Don't go away. The Kaufman Fund is the number one mutual fund from the market low of December the 4th, 1987 through December the 31st, 1994, according to the Mutual Fund Forecaster. Call now for your prospectus, 1-800-688-8259. The fund's past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Please read the prospectus before you invest. Call 1-800-688-8259. Shouldn't your money be with the winner? The Kaufman Fund, one 800 688 8259. Broadcasting from Connecticut, home of the NCAA Women's College Basketball Champions, the Yukon Huskies. You're listening to WTIC Hartford.
It's 2.30. I'm Judy DiCipio, WTIC 1080 News. Severe weather is pounding down in the greater Hartford area now. Let's get details from meteorologist Dave Goldbaum at the WTIC New England Weather Service. Dave? Okay, Judy, we're looking at live Doppler radar right now and seeing the uh, line of showers and embedded uh, severe thunderstorms uh, now into eastern Hartford County. Uh, the leading edge now extending from Enfield uh, down through East Windham and uh, South Windsor, Manchester, Glastonbury, right into northern Middlesex County. Severe thunderstorm warnings in effect for Hartford, New Haven, Middlesex, and Tallinn counties now for the next hour or so. I think the worst is over here in downtown Hartford. We had the uh, uh, wind gusts up to about 30 or 35 miles per hour. But along that line that I just mentioned, uh, there could be wind gusts uh, in excess of 50 miles per hour with some of these storms as they uh, roll on uh, eastward at a good clip. And uh, we can expect... Uh, uh, some severe weather to march through eastern portions of the state during the next hour or so. And uh, severe thunderstorm watch is in effect for all of the area until 6 p.m. this evening. Numerous trees down over in uh, western Connecticut as the uh, severe thunderstorms rolled through there. So we'll keep an eye on the weather for you and we'll have all the details coming up as the afternoon goes on. From the WTIC 24-hour traffic network on Route 185 on Simsbury side of Avon Mountain, power lines are down. A tractor trailer is blocking the road again that's on the Simsbury side. There's an overturned trailer truck on 84 eastbound in downtown Hartford. It's blocking the two right-hand lanes between exits 46 and 48. There's one trooper on the scene. Approach that area with caution. I'm Judy DiCipio, WTIC 1080 News. So listen, darling, there's a draft here. Get me a little sweater, would you? You know, I keep telling my son that he should be careful with that checking account of his. Things weren't always like they are today. People throwing money around like it was paper. I tell him I was in my 30s before I ever wrote a check. And believe me, you paid for those checks. Better to just go to town and pay those bills with cash and get a receipt. But no, this schmagiggy, this Mr. Smarty Pants, even though he's one of the top dental surgeons in the country, he said with his account at the Savings Bank of Manchester, he didn't pay for checks. With a low minimum balance, interest he even gets. Such an account. So what is this bank? He says it's no ma and pa operation. It's the biggest little bank in Connecticut. So go figure. Savings Bank of Manchester member FDIC equal housing lender. WTIC's Dr. Laura is coming up at 3. You'll never look at relationships the same way. Go back to Jim in Lake Arrowhead, California. Go ahead and make your uh, your tell your story, and I'll remind people of the point I once made. Okay, it's about my entrepreneurism story. here. Yeah, right. My story is about my friend who who started the company, and and he employed he became a good sized company. He employed several hundred employees. By the way, he always paid his top engineers more money than he paid himself. It's an example of of a guy creating jobs. At any rate, my uh, my friend said Meyer. He has his name. He said. Uh, you know, I want to find something that I can do that isn't tied to the space or the, or the defense industry. And so with his creative genius, he thought up a household product, uh, a consumer product that he could manufacture. And he, and he said, I'm going to start this company. And he worked out all the details. He had it all, all planned out. And then he took it to his tax attorney and the accountants. And they said, under the graduated income tax program, the most you can expect to net-net on your investment is one-half of 1%. And he says, Jim, it just isn't worth it. I take that big risk, and I'm not going to do it. Now, that, job, that company would have employed 100 people to start with. Why is that? Why, how can they calculate he's going to get one-half of 1%? I'm not sure. If how, that's, that's true, nobody would do it, and a lot of people... Well, that's what he figured he'd get. Well, no, that's on his second business, you see. Yeah. His first business, he was already making so much. His company was making so much that he couldn't expect to make more. Now, I don't know the details. That's just a figure he gave me. He said the net-net that I would get personally could, would not exceed about a half of 1%. But when was this? Because you can only exceed, succeed once. Well, that was back in the, in the probably 60s. Well, we're looking at a 70 and 80% top marginal rate back then. That makes sense. Yeah, see, and so, so he said, I'm not going to do it. 
And I thought, man, here he would have created another 100 jobs, maybe another 1,000 jobs. Mm -hmm. But he can't create them yeah, well, because that's they why. won't let him make them. That's okay. why, because these would have been the last dollars he earned, and the marginal rates apply to the last dollars you earn. And when you got to... I mean, remember when Kennedy cut taxes, he lowered the top marginal rate to 70% from over 90. Yeah. I mean, the top marginal yeah, rate... That was, in, that was when we were in the 90s. Okay, well, so and, and, that, and, 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 that explains it. That ex but, you, but you see how that's destroying the economy. Yeah. In fact, even the graduate income tax. And people don't understand that. If we could... If we eliminated the, the uh, graduated tax, we would start, uh, the, the economy would become so dynamic, it would be, I think, a very short time we'd have full employment with good jobs. And well, 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 we have that now. Haven't you been listening to the president? <laughs> wow. We have it no, now. I don't listen to the president We've anymore. got full employment. That's what Greenspan, everybody said. 5% unemployment is full employment. We can't reasonably expect anymore now. The, uh, and you've got people out there saying tax cuts are a bad idea because we don't need to stimulate the economy. It's growing too fast now. When you have full employment, there's going to be competition for the workers. And that's what's going to create higher real income and, and better benefits. Right. Because there's going to be a shortage of workers. And you're going to say, hey, I want those people. I'll pay more. I'll create a way to get them to my company. And that's the dynamics of the free market economy. Right. It's the, it's the only way to go. And, of course, the thing that worries me the most right now is the, is the major news media is still so left. And so many people watch that television every day that it just uh, they're getting fed a, a very, very sick diet. I know, but we're making headway on that. We really are. It's so long. I'm convinced with some recent polling data that I've seen. Look, over half the American people think the Republicans have the best ideas to advance the country. Over half the people like the contract with America, despite this media onslaught that there's been. And I've never seen anything like this. If you get close, maybe during the first Reagan years. But so they, they can be... Um, defeated. Jim, thanks for the call. I appreciate it. The, uh, the point that I want to make again is talking about this guy in his garage who was working for a huge company, decided he could do it better himself, make a better valve than was being used at present. I'll, I'll never forget when the government decided, um, Congress decided in the late 80s that we were going to defund Star Wars. Uh, research, And they thought that simply by not allowing money for research, no grants, that there would no longer be any Star Wars research. And what they forget is that there's some little nerd with his computer working in his garage or in his basement. We interrupt this program because of an emergency condition. Important instructions will follow. National Weather Service in Taunton, Massachusetts has issued a severe thunderstorm warning effective until 3.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time for people in the following location in north, north central Connecticut, Tolland County. Severe thunderstorms are moving across Hartford County and will move into Tolland County by 2.45 p.m. These storms have produced wind gusts near 60 miles per hour in Southington and at Bradley International Airport. Severe thunderstorms produce damaging wind in excess of 55 miles per hour destructive hail, deadly lightning, and very heavy rain. For your protection, move to an interior room on the lowest floor of your home or business. Heavy rains flood roads quickly, so don't drive into areas where water covers the road. This concludes the important EBS message. WTIC, Hartford. I got, I got four kids, modest house, modest car. I was going to do my taxes by myself to save some money and I looked at it and I probably could figure it out but I just didn't have I don't have a problem paying this guy 250 bucks but why should I am I making a measly $85,000 which may seem like a lot to people that don't make that kind of money but those that do realize I'm not in the high con uh, why should I have to pay an account to get that done well, because it's so complicated that you can't figure it out unless you spend four to six hours on it. Yeah, and I, I, you know, my time is more valuable than that. I got to go out and sell stuff. That's what I do. 
Then it occurred to me, uh, I'm a proponent of flat tax, but it occurred to me that there's so many talented accountants out there. Uh, the U.S. tax code has built an industry of very, very well-educated people uh, to, to avoid, help other people like me avoid paying more than they have to. Right. And it's wrong. <laughs> I've got a, a, <laughs> a brother-in-law who's got a master's in tax, which is ridiculous. Here's a highly educated guy. And it made me think about what was formerly the big eight, all the smart people working for those companies, intelligent people. What a waste of effort. Imagine those people doing something productive. I mean, they're not dumb people. I'll tell you what this illustrates is how tough it's going to be to get to the flat taxes. Exactly. These people have a powerful lobby. Exactly. And it's, um, these people will be aced out. There won't be any need for them, <clears throat> especially if you get Dick Army's postcard idea. Well, you know, uh, uh, you got to be pretty smart to be a CPA. Okay, they work hard to get there. And they're not going to let that go. Uh, it's, just, it's just unfortunate that there's so many people like me that's got to pay to get their taxes done. And I don't mind paying taxes. I think it's right. I think we need to do it. But I just, I think I pay too much. Yeah, that's the point. But I, I just don't think I need to have somebody, pay, you know, do it for me. Everybody has their own axe to grind when it comes to taxes. <clears throat> I, 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 I'll tell you something, folks. I, <laughs> there, there is a part of me that wants to go back prior to 1913 when nobody paid any income tax when there was none. We have, we have gotten so far along the line, you got people like Greg who says, I don't mind paying taxes. Uh, it's necessary, so forth. And I, I know that it is based on how much money we spend and the services that many people demand of government now, but I think it's a crying shame how this has settled in to be part of everybody's mindset because it is that mindset allows people to continue to raise taxes and to say that there's a duty on behalf of citizens to pay them and, and so forth and, uh, and, and so on. And I would do anything I could to reverse that mindset. Because reversing, we're never going to go back to these days, don't misunderstand me, I'm not living under an illusion. But I would certainly love to put the brakes on this notion that we're not paying enough and that we have problems because we're not paying enough and the only reason or the only way that we can solve our problems is to, to be honest here and pay more. Uh, I, and if somebody wants to come talk to me about we need to pay more taxes, I'm going to say to them, you write the check. You think we need to pay more taxes than you volunteer to do it. But um, it, it's like anything else. It's welfare in reverse, folks. Imagine these people in Washington as welfare recipients, and we just keep sending them money in the pipeline. And the more they get, the more they're going to expect, the more they're going to want, and the more they're going to feel entitled to, and that's where we are. And it's coming from the producers. $5.4 trillion of wealth redistributed since 1964 on welfare alone. And yet the percentage of people on welfare is higher. People are still complaining. $5.4 trillion. That's, that's more than enough to buy every tangible asset in the United States. And they say that we're not paying enough. They say that we've had too big a party. And don't forget where that $5.4 trillion comes from. It comes from you, the people who are working. And think about where it's going. And it's just time to put the brakes on all this. And that's what's trying to be done now, and I hope they succeed. We'll take a break. Be right back after this. You're listening to the EIB Network. The Rush Limbaugh Show is on WTIC AM 1080. Hey, everybody. Johnny Bench here for the club. The best car theft deterrent is common sense. Make your car a tough target so thieves don't choose it. Always park your car in well-lit areas. Lock your doors. Keep valuables in the trunk. And keep the club locked onto the steering wheel of your car. The need for protection was never more important than now. Statistics show that a car is stolen every 19 seconds. I use the club and so should you. Easy to use and tough to accept no imitations. Want to keep it? Then club it from Winter International. Are allergies making you miserable? Now get fast temporary relief from allergies without side effects. Try SunSource Allergy Relief, an all-natural homeopathic medicine that stimulates your body's natural healing process while giving temporary relief of symptoms. No side effects, all natural. SunSource Allergy Relief, 
at food, drug, and health food stores. Call for information about the growing line of SunSource homeopathic products from Mind Body Incorporated. 800 777 2000. Use as directed. I'd looked at a lot of mid-sized cars and had pretty much decided on a Honda Accord LX. Then I heard about the $4,000 Oldsmobile Challenge. Naturally, I was skeptical. I could believe the mid-sized Cutlass Supreme has more legroom, a sportier interior, and more engine power than a Ford. But a car like Cutlass Supreme more affordable than a Ford? Come on. Well, it's true. Up front, the purchase price is over $4,000 less than a Ford. And with standard features like anti-lock brakes, 3.5, one liter V6 engine, dual airbags, cassette, air, cruise, power locks, and more, all included in Cutlass Supreme's simplified price of $18,200. Accord never had a chance. That Oldsmobile $4,000 challenge works for me. Like the guy says, it's my money. Take the $4,000 Oldsmobile challenge now at your local Olds retailer. Every Supreme comes with the Oldsmobile Edge, the most complete commitment to customer satisfaction in the business. Price comparison based on MSRPs of comparably equipped models, tax title registration extra. Beezers, may I help you? Buy a phone system for your business now, and you may outgrow it sooner than you think. Beezer and Barton, may I help you? That's why SNEP offers Centralink, the phone system that grows and changes as your business grows and changes. Beezer, Barton, Bauer, and Bass, may I help you? You get the phone system you need now, plus the flexibility to add lines and features as you need them. Beezer, Barton, Bauer, Bass, Belly, Beckett, and Bowles, may I help you? Like MessageWorks, our new voicemail feature, or options like call waiting. And because the phones in your office are linked to the heart of the system in our central office, there's no equipment to buy, virtually no capital investment. Good news for growing businesses. Beezer, Barton, Bauer, Bass, Belly, Beckett, Bowles, Biddles, Burton, Beezer, To find Bob out Bob. about our free installation offer, plus our low Central Link Select toll rates, call 1-800-233-2220 today. SNET. We go beyond the call. We're the station that talks about the issues you really care about. WTIC AM 1080. The new media redefining it. Rush Limbaugh, America's truth detector, setting the national agenda. By the way, there's a, um, I meant to mention this earlier. Great editorial today in the Wall Street Journal about talk radio and Mrs. Clinton's recent assault uh, on it. And it, um, it has nothing in it that is really new. It, 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 uh, it just reprints some data from previous uh, polls that have been taken on who listens to talk radio, makes the point that the mainstream media doesn't quite understand this alternative media because they've lost their... Uh, monopoly, that um, the, the very notion that the truth is absent on talk radio is fallacious, cannot be established, um, that talk radio's critics hardly ever listen to it, um, makes the point that the, the critics are always, and this is a point that I have made, these people back in 1988 when vote turnout was low and the loser lost, Dukakis, they complained very loudly that democracy was threatened because the vote turnout was so low, there just aren't enough people who care. And now, after the Rush Limbaugh program and the rest of talk radio, more people than ever are involved and calling and faxing and telegraphing. And these same people say democracy is threatened because too many people care and these people are too stupid and dumb to know what they're doing. They're a bunch of mind-numbed robots. It's a good piece. It's a... Um, Real good piece. The picture is there. That picture's been in a Wall Street Journal before. That picture's in here, yeah. Yeah. The picture is in the uh, left hand column of the editorial, and Mrs. Clinton's picture is in the right hand column beneath mine. Um, last line, of course, we've said this too. Talk radio's hosts merely said publicly what many ordinary people have been saying to each other privately for a long time. It's the same old thing, validation of what people already believe. It's a good piece. I, I, you ought to read it. You ought to be hold of, hold of the Wall Street Journal. Realize that uh, they've also read it in the White House. And because they read this, they're panicking. Atlanta, Elena, 
Welcome to the Rush Limbaugh program. Hello. Uh, hi, Rush. Hi. Uh, take Adidas from the Russian immigrant. Okay. Happy to live in the United States. Thank you very much. I would like to comment on the caller who was talking about redistribution of wealth. And uh, now, which 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 one was that? The guy uh, who the guy who who tried to convince, I guess, himself and everybody else that it is so good, and it's necessary to have a distribution. Is this wealth. the guy who came up with the deserted island analogy? Yes, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, Scott well, from Waco, Texas. <laughs> yes, I guess Waco. <laughs> Uh, what I would like to say that I don't think... Well, because I suspect that if you ask civil rights leaders this question, they would have to begrudgingly admit that affirmative action might have had some, some impact, but uh, maybe not enough to measure because they don't want to get rid of it because it's a purely political game for them. Uh, I understand your point, and uh, since the income parity has been reached between black and white households in Queens, Shouldn't we now the, consider the playing field level and just get rid of affirmative action? No, sir, because there is never intended to be an end to affirmative action by those who advocate it. Now, I understand you know that. I'm just, I'm just answering your question. Your question is rhetorical. Good one. Appreciate it. Back with more in a minute. You're listening to the EIB Network. Rush, noon to 3 on WTIC AM 1080. If you suffer from nearsightedness or astigmatism, we may have a solution. It's called RK. Radio keratotomy or related refractive procedures could actually improve your eyes themselves. More people than you can imagine have improved their sight this way. To find out if refractive treatment might be for you, call the Alliance for Clear Vision at 1-800-99-VISION to speak with a member ophthalmologist nearby. The Alliance for Clear Vision, because you deserve to see as well as you can naturally. Call today, 1-800-99-VISION. I'm in the Amazon Delta with Chief Tanabe, who supplies the Carnuba Wax in new Simonize car finish. Come a little while, Simonize. He says Simonize is a polish and wax that works on all cars. Come a little while. This is because of a fertility dance he will now do around the Carnuba tree. Come a little while. May this Carnuba Wax make any car finish shinier than an, than an anaconda's belly? Come a little while. New Simonize car finish. Come a little while. Chief, don't do that part of the dance here. Sierra season is back. Looking for low-priced midsize? The smart money's on Oldsmobile Sierra. And this Sierra season, the new 95 Sierra is only $15,400. The lowest-priced American midsize, period. Sierra, $2,900 less than Ford Taurus GL, $3,200 less than Dodge Intrepid, and $4,600 less than Toyota Camry DLX. Sierra, with popular features like driver's airbag, anti-lock brakes, automatic, air, cassette, power door locks, and more, all built into one low simplified price. Sierra, the only midsize to earn Smart Money Magazine's best buy rating last year. So if you want a car that will seat six comfortably, a car engineered to last, one with safety, performance, and value, the Smart Money's on old Sierra. Only 15400 complete. Sierra season is back at your local Oldsmobile retailer. Every Sierra comes with the Oldsmobile Edge, the most complete commitment to customer satisfaction in the business. MSRP is based on comparably equipped models. Tax title registration extra. Spring is in the air. Flowers are blooming. Young men's hearts turn to fancy. And you're thinking, great, I get to do the closets. Thank goodness there's Home Goods, where you'll find everything for your spring spruce up at 25 to 60 percent less than department store regular prices every day. Home Goods has over 7,000 organizers, shelves, storage boxes, and bins. Okay, enough straightening already. Let's get to the fun part. Home Goods is the spruce up capital of the world. Thousands of curtains, accent pillows, wicker baskets, and rugs. Over 8,000 sheets and pillowcases in the newest spring colors. Plus, enough towel and accessories to turn your bathroom into a veritable Taj Mahal. Home Goods. Everything to freshen up your home at 25 to 60 percent off. And since it's all under one big roof, you'll have plenty of time left over in case your heart turns to fancy too. Shop around. You'll always come home to Home Goods. Call 1-800-614-HOME for the location nearest you. WTIC's Dr. Laura is coming up at 3. You'll never look at relationships the same way. I have some exciting news 
news about the $189 billion over five years tax cut, the crown jewel of the Republican contract with America. Voting at this moment goes on on the rule. Let me explain to you the rule. The rule states that there will be no amendments to the tax bill as written. Nobody will be allowed to amend the rule that's or the, the, uh, uh, the bill which would then, somebody could say, well, I don't like this $200,000 ceiling for the child credit tax. I want $95,000. If the rule passes, and it just has, then there are no amendments allowed, and the bill must be voted on as written. Uh, as, as of now, 223 votes for the rule. Uh, 218 is necessary for passage. So there are five votes over, and they're still voting. It may go higher. This is, so, in almost all cases, not every single one, but almost all cases, the, the vote on the final bill will mirror the vote on the rule. So the rule vote indicates preliminarily that the bill itself will pass. Uh, 223, as of moments ago, is five votes more than necessary, and they didn't think they had that big a margin. Before the vote, they were saying they were three short. Now, after the rule vote, there will be four hours of spirited debate at uh, which time, after which time, the vote on the bill will take place. So that's probably going to be around 7 or 8 o'clock tonight, the vote on the bill. So we should know by tomorrow. We still have Mr. Newt tomorrow. Mr. Newt will be with us for about a half hour tomorrow from 12.15 to 12.45 Eastern Time uh, to discuss the first 100 days, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we'll look forward to that, as well as the vote in the final bill later tonight. Meantime, Holtzville, New York, this is Larry. Welcome to the uh, EIB Network. Hello, Rush. Hi. Um, I work out in a bar I just started out in the Hamptons, one of your favorite places. <laughs> However, uh, <laughs> there, there is a, a conservative element out there, but you've got to look very low under the dirt to find it. I know. They're mostly in quag. Yeah, exactly. But I've been working at this place for about two months now as a bartender. And just two weeks ago, they instituted a tip-sharing policy in which all the bartenders who work there on a certain day pool their tips and share them. Whether you work 10 hours or 6 hours, you make the same amount of money. And just to give you an example of how productivity and morale has already declined in these, little, in these two weeks, I mean, people are always grumbling uh, that bartenders on earlier shifts don't do their necessary cleanups anymore. They figure, oh, the guy in the later shift, he's getting the same amount of money for less work, so he's going to do that. And just to give an example of uh, what this kind of liberal thinking will do, and I'm surprised that some of these liberals haven't suggested that we in the United States just give all our money to them, and then they'll just give it all, give back what they feel like. Well, don't be surprised if it did happen someday, because they do view all money as theirs for redistribution later on. Good story. Pooling tips. Everybody gets an equal share, which is not anything to do with how much work they put in to get the tips. It isn't going to be long, as it is in this case, before people say, hell with this idea. Not good, and uh, stop working. What's, I'm, I'm happy to note that apparently they're still boozing in the Hamptons. Uh, and because, uh, you know, <laughs> well, you go, I'll tell you what, the, the, all of the anti-liquor uh, uh, PSAs and so forth have worked. You go to a, a lot of bars, uh, people are drinking Perrier and club soda and so forth. Uh, uh, there's, there's not as much consumption of adult beverage going on out there as there used to. Still sufficiently high quantity, but not nearly as much as it was. It's great to know that those in the Hamptons have resisted the public onslaught and that they're still boozing it up. See you later, folks, on TV back here tomorrow with Mr. Newt.